All right, everyone. Hello, and welcome to our next talk here in track three. Glad to have you here again. I hope the conference is going well for you so far. Are you having a good conference? Yeah. Excellent. All right. Thank you to all the wonderful speakers and you as a wonderful audience. And also thank you for wearing your mask consistently around the conference. It really helps us to continue to promote and follow our, our agreement and code of conduct. A couple of quick notes. Uh, this evening, there is a change in our schedule. There's a medical device security and privacy issues uh, in here in the same room at 10 p.m. That's different than what we were going to have. It was going to be a, a talk on sonography. It's now about medical devices. So if you get the chance, come in and watch it. Uh, we need workshop helpers for today and tomorrow. So if anyone is interested, please head over to the info desk or ask Mitch, either through the Matrix chat or if you run into the hallways, and they would love to have you come in and help out. And maybe they'll find a green shirt for you if they get the chance to help out. Uh, for this talk, please make sure you mute your cell phones and other devices. The speakers are quite sensitive and tend to pick them up relatively easily. With that, we are going to go into the next talk with Nick Germain on secure cell phone communication, mission accomplished or popular delusion. So with that, take it away, Nick. Thank you. Uh, how many people have ever heard of a secure mobile phone? And I'm curious to learn. Uh, I basically um, uh, brought together as much content a as possible so that I could present it to you. Uh, there is more content, but there are many, many companies that claim that they have secure products. And um, I personally have not uh, quite found one that completely checks out. Um, uh, let's see. See, 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 see. Um, but um, even before I begin to get into the nuts and the bolts of uh, the search for uh, secure communication, I, I want to get a general idea of uh, what the great value of secure communication would be uh, for uh, you all. Uh, wh what, is, what is missing from the equation now uh, during this period that it's so hard to find communications that you can trust? And um, uh, I, 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 I'd like as much as much participation as you as you feel like giving. Um, but uh, this this is question number one: What would you do with a secure telephone, a, a secure communication, if you had it? Would you do anything different than if you're using a uh, what I like to call my eye hole? Um, please. thing to do with, with secure communication. We could be speculative. What, could, what can't we do now that we would like to do if we had some, some confidence that well, we weren't getting bugged? Basically, we want to be able to trust the, the microphone we're talking into to be conveying the, 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 the idea that um, 
uh, that we were trying to convey. Um, uh, however, um, uh, I want to bring up this, this other point that um, seems to be disturbing. Um, oh, sir, one more. Vietnam was very unpopular, and they were uh, sending uh, American students uh, to get chopped up in Vietnam. And um, uh, this is uh, the this was a very early period in the history of television, and um, the reporters who were going out looking for stories, they felt uh, that uh, the most interesting thing going on in the streets of many many cities was that people were demonstrating, and that was good TV. And so uh, the 50s didn't see a lot going on as far as uh, a, a, not a great deal of, um, what would we call this, uh, public uh, sentiment getting uh, in, into, the public, um, in, into the public eye. And so uh, television began to mature and they began to show the, the reaction to uh, the, the, the opposition to uh, government activities. And um, that war came to an end. And um, this is a remarkable piece of history. Um, it came to an end because people got up and spoke and they, um, sure, they were beat up in a lot of places and they uh, ran into opposition from the authorities but they managed to get a point across. And, um, and uh, it was a, a, a major turning point in the United States history. Um, uh, uh, I'm not sure if that can happen again today in the same manner because the TV doesn't cover it and um, it, it doesn't get to as many people as it did and um, uh, the, I dare say the quality of journalism has uh, deteriorated drastically since that period. And um, uh, actually the topic of um, what is a, an authoritative source for information came up a couple of times uh, in, the, uh, in the big room. One in the opening uh, conversation, uh, the, young, the young woman who... Um, spoke about uh, exposing uh, psych psychological operations. And it just came up once again because the keynote speaker is talking about when she was working at Facebook, uh, Facebook um, had a couple of these sponsored, we could call them psychological operations, one in Azerbaijan and one in Honduras where false information was uh, put onto Facebook and presented as uh, as 
honest information, and uh, it uh, threw the election to the uh, uh, to the authoritarian figures that uh, that uh, sponsored this. Um, and one thing that the young lady said uh, yesterday morning, uh, uh, when I asked her, well, what do you consider a um, a legitimate source for news? And she mentioned the New York Times and. Uh, I think anybody who read the Rolling Stone in 1977, October, there was a story by Carl Bernstein that exposed the New York Times once and for all. You don't have to read two stories after you read that one um, about, I think the title of it was The CIA and the Media. It, it, it addressed the Times, but it also addressed CBS, and basically most of the big, the big outlets are... Um, uh, not really, not to be trusted, according to this source. And um, Bernstein was good at that uh, at that moment for some reason. He really he he did a good job to um, uh, back in '77. So um, the question really is, what are the legitimate sources? And so, if um, if we're trying to both have um, people speaking, standing up on their hind legs, and expressing themselves. Um, it's very hard to do when, you, when you're under surveillance. And um, uh, there's a special kind of surveillance when you're carrying it around in your, uh, in your uh, what's a polite word for the back pocket? I guess the back pocket would be a polite word for it. Um, or, or in your front pocket. Um, and um, uh, you may have heard these stories about how... Um, uh, when when the uh, when the Facebook ma pings a noise on your phone, uh, your endocrine system kicks in and you have an adrenaline rush, uh, and um, et cetera, et cetera. This is this is messing with the human animal quite a bit, and um, um, uh, to know that there's somebody watching you or listening to you all the time also has a major effect. And um, this, is, uh, this was pointed out in a, in a, in a talk by uh, Glenn Greenwald. Geez, I don't know how many years ago this was at Carnegie Hall. Uh, but I thought it was very, very, um, very, very valuable uh, that he, um, that he uh, pointed this out. Um, he said that... Um, when you want to, when you want to summon up the courage to go and stand up and say no, this is not right, and to express yourself, and to do all those things that the American flag is associated with, like uh, trying to protect your neighbors, your country, and uh, honoring truth, justice, and the American way, it takes it takes a lot of guts. And to summon up that courage, you need to be alone. You need to have a little space. And if somebody is watching you, you're not alone. And it's very hard to get the guts to do it. And that, the, the memory that somebody is on top of you at that moment that you're trying to summon up that courage is often going to make it impossible to summon up that courage. So there, there is a, it is a very, very powerful thing that we're walking around with these cell phones now. And so... Um, uh, I'm I'm trying to remember how long ago. Um, I, I I guess I should just ask and get a show of hands if I may. Um, how many people try to protect their security? Uh, and I, we don't have any ink here. I uh, basically on a, on a um, on a measure of like one to five. If five meaning you are absolutely secure and you trust the communications uh, venues that you use. And one being, you give it a shot. Ah, th a hard throw. Thank you. All right, well, backhand is not that easy. Um, um, one, mean one meaning, you try a little bit. And five meaning, you think you've got it nailed. And I I'm just curious about how many people just try a, at least a minimum amount uh, to, to, um, to, be, to secure their communications, be it on the internet, on the, uh, on the telephone, et cetera. Do we have very many people? Okay, there's a little bit. There's just about, 
A half dozen, I would say. Um, how many people put some effort into it, put their shoulder to the grindstone and, and really give it a good, a, a good push? All right, that's about 10. And um, how many people spend a lot of time trying to get to sleep at night trying to fix this problem? I mean, who really care about this? And that's even more than the previous. And how many think they got the, uh, the devil on the run here, that w w we are within reach of possibly uh, securing our communication if we do everything in our power? And that's about one. And so I don't even want to go to five because I think we might have a negative uh, integer up there. Um, so um, basically, uh, I also am interested in, um, in trying to figure out the best way, the, the way to be most secure. And, um, and it, is, it is very, very hard. And uh, the, the hardware that we deal with that appears to be the most, uh, the most important uh, device, uh, more so than the computer. You could put different uh, tools and antiviruses and all kinds of things. You could, you have a little bit more control over the computer. But this little monster, you have a lot less control. And, um, and so, um, let me, let me return to my notes over here. Um, ah. And f forgive me, I, I, I'm, uh, I, I prefer to do these things interactively with you all, and so returning to my notes is not as much, not as much fun. Uh, 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 uh. Well, l let me go back to the, to the earlier part of the equation. We want to be safe. We don't want false information. However, w w it, it, it appears to me, uh, my, judging from the level of a political activity, that is to say, protest uh, and questioning of authority in American culture at this time, that um, there appears to be a, a, a very low level uh, for anybody who was uh, aware of or alive during these 60s and even the 70s. And so um, it would occur to me that probably one of the most valuable things you could do if you, if, if you were secure in your identity and insecure in your ability to speak is to probably get up there and speak now. Um, uh, we see every day in the papers that uh, corporations have attained more and more power uh, every, day of, uh, every day for the past ma many, many years. And so uh, we wonder whether there is even politics in the United States and if the people who win elections, we're not sure if they just throw them to the other side. We don't, you know, it, the, 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 uh, the level of um, sincerity of the system seems to be at an all-time low. And so um, it does occur to me that if people felt safer, there would be, uh, there would be uh, uh, opposition. There would be more like, mo more than one point of view that was uh, in charge of the country. Um, uh, <laughs> so we kind of are at a period when the population is, I, I dare say the population is much, much weaker than it was in the past. And it, it, it's not gradual. It's been, it's been um, decreasing quite a bit for a long time. And again, I don't know if anyone, if, 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 if this is obvious to you all or not, uh, but I'm, I'm very curious. I, I, I've been to many countries and I observe the politics in many countries and there's very few that have uh, such a, a limited level of, um, of uh, support from the public, uh, to, my, to my knowledge. But actually, I, one thing I really appreciate is somebody disagreeing with me. And, um, uh, that's what I'm hoping for, uh, and it's it's quite welcome. It's it's uh, it's the 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 best uh, the best response is to get uh, more of a, a, a dialogue. You, it, there's no reason to believe me unless I present sufficient evidence of it, and uh, 
uh, to be challenged on it is, is a good way to acquire that. Let's see. Um, so the question of if we had, oh, please. Entirely without protest. Without protest. That we not are, zero, but. Not, but not significant. It's remarkably uh, low level. I mean, uh, what if we compare it? Uh, you go back to the Iraq War. There were there were demonstrations, but um, uh, you go back to the '60s, and um, there was less than one percent of the population on the streets in the '60s. But it it, it succeeded in bringing an end to the war. That and a very well organized uh, country called Vietnam. Um, but um, uh, do, do, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, do, do people consider the present level of participation of the population of the United States to be highly significant or moderately or low? And why don't we go back to this concept here, one, two, and three. How many people consider the level of um, political participation to be substantial in the United States. Uh, that's three people. And uh, I want to ask if, uh, how, uh, who feels that it's, it's unusually low for uh, a population of uh, uh, large primates. C. This is, this is my observation, too, and I, I appreciate that you're sharing that with me. Um, if you've seen many, many uh, different examples, many, many different societies, it's much easier to judge. It's, it's very hard to judge when you're here and you, you, you've just heard it, uh, you, and, and you just get what is available on the, uh, on the TV and the radio and the internet. Um, and so, um, I believe also when it comes to these devices, this has a very significant level of effect on uh, silencing the population. The, and this is, this is a very powerful psychological tool. Please say that again. That's, this is a very interesting case, um, and uh, it, it's, it's actually an excellent uh, point right at this point of the uh, dialogue. Um, I remember uh, shortly before the uh, uh, Black Lives Matter became well known or et cetera, uh, there, was, there was this thing going around the internet that said that every 24 hours, uh, the police, the Amer uh, an American police officer shot an unarmed black man. And I dug into it, and actually, it's hard to get these statistics. I had to, I had to use the FBI reports, uh, and, and that's the source of this, but they said every 72 hours, an unarmed black man is shot by police in the United States. All right, well, that's, that, that's huge too. Just like 24, 72 is pretty high for shooting uh, unarmed people. And so um, uh, things move along. Uh, uh, I, my view of this country is through a, a, a the lens of New York, and there are really constantly these cases, uh, uh, one after the other. And, um, uh, and finally, the event in, uh, was it West St. Louis? Is that the name of the town where, um, where that uh, took place? Yes, I think it was West St. Louis. It's right next to St. Louis. And, um, and uh, it ignited uh, a lot of actions all over the country because it was so blatant that it, it, it was, it's almost like they were trying to get, a, get attention. Um, and, um, and that was my first, uh, the first time that Black Lives Matter came to a very high level of uh, visibility in the United States. Um, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, 
uh, how effective, how much things have changed since. I don't know the numbers of unarmed black men being executed by police, but um, but it may be it may be a very good example of uh, the positive side, the fact that. Uh, there were people beginning to stand up and be more aggressive in opposing what is, uh, go it's beyond outrageous. It's, it's medieval what's going on out there. Um, uh, however, uh, however, um, that also brought like a, a high point to something they call um, uh, identity politics. This is uh, this is another another thing that gets uh, that is very popular, especially on the on the um, on the internet and etc. And I, I I wonder how many people um, are familiar with this with this concept. Is identity politics? Everybody un know that term, or, or may I, shall I explain it? Uh, uh, even one person I can explain it for. Um, I'm happy to. Oh please. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, the basic, I, I'll try to do it in one sentence, but um, unfortunately, when we protect one identity, we divide, we divide the class that is, that is being taken advantage of, and it, it kind of um, costs, costs us in, in, the, uh, in the overall realm. So uh, there are positives and negatives to this stuff. The, pr the problem is people are not getting together and doing what used to happen and happens in almost every other country. If we look at the news, the, um, I, I think uh, a, good, a good measurement, uh, actually, I remember one of my, one of my colleagues, um, he pointed out that uh, when COVID first came out, um, uh, people lost their jobs in the United States, but um, they didn't lose their jobs in Europe uh, because, as he put it, if uh, the government said you're all going to lose your jobs uh, instead of what the governments actually said, which was uh, you, you're going to keep your job, you're just not going in. So when this is over, you're going to come back, you still have a job. Um, if, if, they did, if they did what they did in the United States, uh, in Europe, uh, they would have, the plazas would have been filled with people. They wouldn't have let it go by. There is a different, a different dynamic in the United States than in Europe. Um, all right, all right. The, uh, Yes. So how do you accommodate your belief with this view that America is immune and no political involvement is ever going to prove themselves or are even serious about it? Because it looks like you're going to live like Obama. Well, it's not, that's not the only reason. There, there may be 50 reasons or a dozen reasons. Yeah. But, <laughs> yes. Um, but, uh, it's a lot easier to get a secure telephone in if you're in if you're in Europe than if you're in the United States. That's that's an interesting phenomenon, um, and that's that's probably the cue to get back to the uh, to get back onto. Americans kind of got along with the government because uh, the Washington won the Cold War. Did I get you right?
Forgive me, a reality of what? Liberalism. Do you think the political activity today compares to the political activity in the United States, compares to the, the level of political sophistication in Europe? I don't, know, I don't know enough about Europe, I can't really. Okay, well your point is well taken, and uh, uh, basically uh, I kind of wanted to ask, what would you do if you had a secure phone? And um, the question of um, uh, if you had more security, if you had more privacy, if, if you were a little more, if you were 150 percent more protected by not having somebody uh, watch you 24/7, uh, and um, let's see, uh, uh, I sat down with a book a couple of weeks ago called Future Crimes. Uh, author is a guy named Mark Goodman. And um, what he did was he, in one, one of the chapters, he listed all of the things that really that Google does, that, um, that uh, uh, capture uh, pretty much our thoughts and our, and, our, um, and our behavior and how many steps we take and all of this kind of thing. Um, and uh, it's actually rather scary uh, to see how invasive this particular company is. It, it, uh, it parallels with Apple as well. Um, I, I mentioned steps. I look on this and I see how many steps I took and I never programmed it to ask how many steps I took on, in a given day or where, where those steps were taken. Uh, but it does remind you that you're not alone. Um, And so uh, basically, I, I, my intent was to line up all of this before I go into the nuts and the bolts of telephones. Um, there, uh, all right, I have an article um, that uh, asks, can I buy a phone that doesn't use anything from Google or Apple? And the question stands, uh, does, uh, is anybody aware of a phone that doesn't use Google or Apple? Say it again. The Pine phone. The Pine phone. Pine. P-I-N-E, correct. Excellent answer because if you want a phone that uh, has, has very few, uh, I don't want to say tracking devices, but uh, it ha you, you don't, uh, if I'm correct, uh, what I read about Pine phone is that um, uh, you're, uh, are you using uh, email on Pine Phone or is it just a phone? Just a Linux phone? Sir? It's a. Uh, I've got Debian on there. So it's a. But you mean Linux operating system? Uh huh. Can you email something like that? Isn't that what that's In any case, there is a phone that probably is the most secure phone that's accessible. It's about 150 bucks, maybe 200 bucks, and it's called a Pine phone. However, these are not widely used because they don't have access to uh, the many apps that people seem to be uh, interested in. The, the, the public uh, is, has become uh, used to having uh, many different uh, functions of their phone, like a, much like an eye hole. Um, and so unfortunately, it appears to be a very limited number of people who are getting into specifically something like the Pine phone. And it, uh, it's unfortunate, sir? Isn't there also a problem with your carrier tracking you, no matter how secure you make your phone to attach to the cell phone network? That's true. Your carrier has a bit more p 
power than we than most people know. Uh, correct. Um, uh, there is the obvious. There is the obvious uh, trail that you leave when you turn on your phone. The towers know exactly where you are, and you're picked up, and your location is identifiable. Um, however, what you're talking about is the carrier itself has some ability to communicate directly to your phone. Uh, do you remember the term for that? The, uh, the baseband modem. Baseband modem. Uh, baseband. Modem. They call it a modem. Oh, okay. The baseband. There is a baseband in your phone that is controlled by the uh, by the uh, the networks themselves. Uh, I just learned this yesterday from a gentleman who was sitting at the table of the, uh, uh, the Free Software Foundation. Uh, and um, we're looking into it a little more deeply. Um, but uh, there is also something called a Nokia phone. Oh, so, please. Say that again, please. So the Pine phone is the only modem in a commercial cell phone that you're able to flash. It's the only cell phone that can... The modem in the cell phone for the controlling the communications is the only the modem that from you can the, flash. From the modem uh, that the carrier can ex access. No. The modem that we the carrier with. And you can flash it? Is that the right word? In other words, you could turn it off. Interesting. Well, thank you for that. Again, uh, most of this, a lot of this stuff requires a group like this to actually uh, learn a little bit uh, more about it. Um, I'm going to bring up the Nokia because uh, uh, the most popular uh, handsets that um, have ever been manufactured, I believe three or four of the most popular were manufactured by Nokia. And um, this is a very simple phone. Uh, uh, to be honest, I've never operated it, but um, it's mostly uh, communicating uh, back and forth. Has anyone ever used this level of technology? Oh, sir, would you be kind enough to inform us um, what apps are on a Nokia phone? I know you have things like a radio, but you could... No apps. So all you're doing is talking. Thank God, thank God. This is basically what I, what I understood to be the case, but I wanted, I, wa I wanted to get a source better than the one that I used. Um, boom, so you could talk on this now. Uh-oh, uh forgive me. Okay, uh, optional, uh, it, it's con it seems consistent with what the gentleman pointed out. Um, uh, however, um, uh, this technology is a G2. I don't believe we can, we can uh, access, I don't believe we can access G2 anymore uh, outside. And um, uh, there we have that, let me, uh, bring up this topic. This is basically a device, a BlackBerry, that you could use for texting. It, many of these did not have microphones. You can't be spied upon without a microphone. And um, so these were considered secure for quite a long time. And uh, CEOs and guys with uh, excessive amounts of money uh, were using these for their business communications. Uh, that's the reputation they have. I, uh, again, this company, is not uh, doing very well anymore. I'm not even sure if they're uh, manufacturing anymore. 
Uh, but there was a period of time when people relied on these. Um, I'm going to name a few other uh, a few other uh, choices. Uh, I, go, I mentioned Ubuntu earlier. That's a Linux uh, operating system. Again, Linux is not Apple and it's not Android. It, that is to say, it's not Apple and it's not Google. And so it is a different language. In, in, and so you're going to have a, a, a considerable about much more privacy in dealing with um, uh, something that is Ubuntu or, or Linux in general. Um, Let's see. Uh, and then there is, there are the very expensive phones that started coming out. And what they tend to do is put apps on top of the operating system, such as a, um, uh, such as the kill switches on certain phones where you could turn off the battery, turn off the microphone, turn off anything. Uh, at the moment you wish to, and it can't be uh, it can't be hacked by uh, by uh, other other uh, by outside sources. Um, uh, I picked up a, a piece uh, addressing uh, the best secure smartphones of 2022. Uh, there's the Serin Labs Fini U1, and this is these are extremely expensive products. There is something that Boeing makes for the intelligence community. I believe it's called the Boeing Black. And there is a Bitum Tough Mobile 2 and the, uh, a third one of these very expensive phones. There's the Purism Librum. That's the one with the, with the, um, with the kill switches. Interesting technology, but um, at the end of the day, something that is, the, the question really arises, what what can possibly uh, begin to compete with the big, the big carriers? And um, I thought that I had found it when I discovered a company in Germany called Vola. And um, this is a phone that's based on an Android system that uh, claims to have been, um, to have all the Google apps removed from it. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, exactly. An Android without the Google, which I, I found hard to comprehend, but there is something to comprehend. Please. I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. You may need to drop the mask for just a moment. Very interesting. And the beauty of having an Android um, device is that you can still download, uh, um, uh, this company will, uh, will introduce you to the apps that are similar to the Google apps but without the Google condition. Um, unfortunately, these things are not made for the United States and this is a shortcoming and if they, uh, with a little bit of um, a little bit of hacking, these things can be um, adapted to uh, U.S. networks. Uh, uh, or I, I I believe this at this point. I've I've only run into one person who uh, claimed to have been using it uh, uh, in the United States. However, I believe it it is within reach because of that one person, and it'd be within reach if. Uh, if a community of people were, were working on it and um, et cetera. Um, How do they block that from? Say that again? How do they block the account of the one person using that? Oh, well, actually, um, I, 
experimented with this myself. I tried to get it online, and the company said, "Go, uh, uh, let's see, T-Mobile and another and another uh, carrier called Mint, both can be accessible, but they could not provide the instructions on how to do it. So I kind of, uh, I, I'm in doubt about that. Um, the, uh, uh, when when asked to um, to document that anybody is operating one in the United States, they failed to. They, they couldn't come up with one. Um, it could be the frequency selection of the phone isn't particularly compatible with what the carriers in the U.S. have. So they, they use different frequency bands from different countries. And then there's another part of this. The company, uh, the company didn't invest in an FCC license in the United States, <laughs> which is not going to block you from using the phone if you can move it or move around and, uh, and uh, if, if you're good with um, uh, programming of these things. Um, however, it, it actually looks like it has some potential if, if a, a large group of people were to, were to purchase these things and, uh, and, uh, and try to work things out and, sh and share their advances in, in putting this to use. And actually, I thought that was a, that, the, uh, the possibility of that seemed to me to be about the best news that we've had in a long time. Uh, and because it would be really helpful if a lot of people had phones that they could trust. And I, that's why I tried to uh, discuss the whole point of how dangerous it is to have a whole population walking around with, uh, with a spy in their pants. So, um, that's pretty much the extent of this discussion. I hope there may be another question or two, if not. Um, uh, I actually, I, I'm, I'm wondering if, um, if this sounds like an interesting, a, a, an interesting possibility. Um, uh, I was hoping to, to see if there's a, a handful of people who are interested in investing in one of these handsets and, um, and uh, working with the, uh, with the people out there uh, who are uh, programming these things and try to program them so that they work on one of the networks at least until the company in Germany is in a position to invest a little bit more and catch up. Otherwise, it, it may take uh, quite a long time, a number of years before these things are actually marketed in the United States. Are you doing this? In any case, um, my intention was to, to, to try to uh, introduce people to this. If I didn't know it without being here today, uh, hopefully a few other people heard about it. And um, uh, what, what is really needed is that people start using these things and they start competing with the other companies that uh, pretty much have uh, a kind of a shared uh, almost a monopoly on the market.
actually uh, refuses, refuses to be spied upon uh, every morning when they get up uh, 15 minutes after they awaken. Thank All right. You. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the talk. Thank you for the audience for participating. <laughs> Our next talk in 10 minutes will be the ransomware protection full of holes. So please come back and attend. <laughs>